Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello, teacher. Hello, students. Welcome to today's lesson on electrolytic cells. We are going to learn what an electrolytic cell is, how to correctly label its parts, and how it relates to different forms of conductivity. Let us get started by doing some review so you can put the electrolytic cell into the context of electrochemistry. Electrical conductivity is the ability of a substance to transmit electricity. There are two major types of electrical conductors. Metallic conductors and electrolytic conductors. Metal is a very good conductor of electricity because of its loosely bound atomic structure. This means that the atoms within metallic conductors contain electrons that are not tied to their respective nuclei. These negatively charged electrons can move freely and amongst them is a series of cations or positively charged metal ions. Therefore, because metallic conductors have a loosely bound atomic structure, when a source of electricity attempts to send new electrons through them, the conductors freely moving electrons will allow it to pass through. The electrons within the conductor are continually displaced as the new electrons move within the conductor. This helps the electricity to be carried through the conductor and out the other side. An electrolytic conductor is a little different from an electrical conductor, but it works on the same principle. It has freely moving particles. Electrolytes are substances that are able to conduct electricity 
in a melted or water-based solution. When new electrons are introduced to the electrolytic conductor by way of an electrical charge, the cations or positively charged ions move in one direction while the anions or negatively charged ions move in the opposite direction. This movement of ions carries the electrical charge through the electrolytic conductor. Students, let us do an activity to review what we have just learned. In a moment, a list of terms and a list of definitions will appear on the screen. Please copy the lists onto a piece of paper and draw lines to match each term with its proper definition. Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. 
Welcome back, students. Were you able to match each term with its definition? You were correct to say that a cation is a positively charged ion, while an anion is a negatively charged ion. You were also correct to say that metallic conductors use metal to conduct electricity, while electrolytic conductors use melted or water-based solutions. An electrolytic cell has three main parts. An electrolyte and two electrodes, being a cathode and an anode, and a DC source. An electrode is a metallic conductor, or graphite rod, which is used to make contact with a non-metallic part of a circuit. Cathodes and anodes can be positively or negatively charged terminals depending on the type of cell. The electrolyte which we have already discussed, is often a solution of water or other solvents in which ions can be dissolved. Solvents are solids, liquids, or gases that can dissolve other solids, liquids, or gases. Students, let us do another activity. In a moment, you will see a diagram of an electrolytic cell. Please label each part of the cell that we have discussed and write down what function each part performs. Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin.
Time's up. Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. Were you able to correctly label and define the parts of an electrolytic cell? Teacher, at the end of this lesson, please go over the diagram with the students. The electrolyte is the liquid solution the two rods are submerged in. If you said the electrolyte allows the electrical current to flow between the electrodes, you were right. The electrodes are the rods submerged in the electrolyte. In this case, the anode is on the left and the cathode is on the right. If you said the anode and the cathode create a connection with the electrolyte to form a circuit, good work! The ions are the positively and negatively labeled particles within the solution. You were right to say that the ions carry the electrical charge through the electrolyte from electrode to electrode. An electrolytic cell decomposes chemical compounds using electrical energy. The electrical current creates a chemical reaction. This process is called electrolysis. The strength of the current within a cell depends on the amount of ions within its electrolyte. The more ions there are, the more powerful the current will be. In a moment, a video will play on the screen. The device shown in the video is called an ammeter. It is used to measure the strength of the electrical current within the cell. In today's lesson, we reviewed metallic and electrolytic conductivity. Metallic conductivity is metal-based, while electrolytic conductivity involved a dissolved, liquid-based solution. We discussed how each of these conductors relates to the function of an electrolytic cell. We also discussed the function of an electrolytic cell and its individual parts. That brings us to the end of today's lesson. Students, thank you for taking the time to learn more about chemistry with me today. Your next lesson will be taught by your classroom teacher. Until next time, 
Thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.